مساء الخير مشاهدينا الكرام وحلقة جديدة من برنامج الشأن الهام نتابع من خلالها آخر التطورات السياسية محليا وإقليميا ودوليا مع ضيفي في حلقة اليوم سفير الولايات المتحدة في الكويت السيد دوغلس سليمان ولكم مستر امباسادر to the show. Abdulhar, I'm very, very happy to be here and greetings this evening to all of your viewers. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Let me start with your first visit to Kuwait. It was in 1988, like uh, 27 year, years ago. Quite a few years ago. I was here as a junior diplomat and assistant mm. to uh, the man who was in charge of our policy for all of the Middle East and South mm. Asia. And I stayed at the old American embassy on Gulf Road, just mm. down from the Kuwait Towers. Mm. Uh, and I remember walking out and looking at the Gulf and thinking Iran is just over there and Iraq is just up there and Saudi Arabia is just over there. Yeah, well, what a hot spot for a small country. Huh? Well, but I was thinking also, think of the responsibilities and the opportunities mm. of Kuwait for having such uh, a strategic location, having such uh, sort of wealth beneath its territory, that there were mm. great opportunities as well as the challenges. Yeah, definitely. And thanks to our foreign, foreign policy <laughs> and in Kuwait. Um, um, and you're back, you're back to Kuwait in, in 2014, 2015. Uh, how, how did Kuwait change from your perspective when, within those 27 years? Well, there are a couple of things that haven't changed in Kuwait. The, the real warm hospitality of Kuwaitis. I remember uh, Kuwaitis inviting me to their homes and having wonderful meals even back in 1988. What has changed, though, is the development in Kuwait. The country... Mm. The city is much larger, it's more developed, mm -hmm. there are uh, more cars on the roads, there are far more roads than there used to be, and a lot more economic activity. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember thinking that when I was walking along the Gulf in 1988, that the Kuwait Towers were very tall. Mm -hmm. But when I came back in August of 2014 and walked to the towers and then looked over at the Humra building, yeah. I said, boy, Kuwait has really grown since I was here last in 1988. Well, uh it, yes, definitely, it, it groans in, when it comes mm -hmm. to construction, but what about the economical in, in environment? Ha, have, have you noticed any, any changes, especially after 2003 and the statement of His Highness Amir mm -hmm. of Kuwait from changing Kuwait to a more friendly economical in, in environment? Ha, have you seen or noticed changes? No, Abdul Wahab, you're exactly right. I have seen some changes, especially some changes since I've been here uh, over the past year. Uh, there is a lot more economic opportunity in Kuwait than I remember from 1988. Mm. In 1988, obviously, Kuwait was very strong in the hydrocarbons and in, in the oil industry. Mm. But what we see now in Kuwait is potential to move into lots of different uh, directions. Mm. Uh, the Kuwaiti government has put out its uh, 2035 vision to look forward to diversify the economy to try to develop a knowledge-based economy and uh, to try to encourage foreign investors to come into Kuwait. Uh, my understanding is that that's not because Kuwait needs money. Kuwait exports capital and invests in other countries. But what the government wants to see in Kuwait is modern technology, modern processes, and international standard business mm. practices and I think that there's a very good infrastructure that is being put in place. Are we, are we in the right way? Um, I think you're moving in the right direction. Mm. Uh, over the past three weeks I spent a lot of time mm. traveling across the United States uh, with uh, Sheikh Dr. Mashal Jabbar Asabah, the director mm. of the uh, Kuwait um, Investment Promotion Development Authority. Mm. And uh, I was in Houston talking to people in the oil industry, but also in New York, also on television and in mm -hmm. Washington, mm -hmm. promoting the opportunities in Kuwait and the new legal infrastructure in Kuwait that makes it easier for foreign companies who want to bring new technology or to bring new kinds of education or medical care to Kuwait than was possible even a year ago. So we are optimistic about Kuwait, and now I think Kuwait's legal infrastructure makes it uh, if not the most liberal in the Gulf, to bring in this kind of technology and know-how, uh, it can certainly compete with all the other uh, countries in the Gulf. And we're, we're very bullish on Kuwait's future. Mm. Very clear. Uh, let me talk about more about a, a, YouTube, um, a YouTube movie I've seen like mm -hmm. a, month, a month ago or two months ago uh, about, uh, yeah, and, that, and that's a YouTube show was showing you 
going out to the to the Kuwaiti beaches and mm -hmm. trying to clean uh, what was over there. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's very nice of you really to see to see you in this in this mm -hmm. position. Uh, the, and this is the social more as a social responsibility mm -hmm. from the American embassy uh, uh, to to start. I I can't remember seeing that before. Mm -hmm. Is is that like the first? Are you the first ambassador? working on social responsibilities here in the country? Uh, I don't know if I am, but I'm very happy that I have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I should say that international environmental issues are a priority for Secretary Kerry and a priority for President Obama, mm -hmm. and particularly the health of oceans and seas and gulfs and our waterways. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Kuwaitis don't understand how important the northern part of the Gulf in Kuwait Bay is. Uh, last November, the embassy, along with uh, the Scientific Center and Kuwait University, sponsored a conference to talk about uh, monitoring and protecting the waters of the Gulf. And I learned at that conference that Kuwait Bay, between Kuwait, between Al Asima and Doha, is one of the most important fish hatcheries in the entire world. Mm -hmm. And it is crucial for the fishing, mm -hmm. not only for Kuwait, mm -hmm. but the entire Gulf and even out into the Arabian Sea. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we went to the beach at Sulubikhat uh, in March, we were focusing on trying to keep the Gulf as clean as possible, but also bringing in Kuwaiti school children and teachers and people from Kuwait University uh, because from my standpoint, it is my personal responsibility to help where I can, but I think it's also good that Kuwaitis learn what they can do mm -hmm. uh, to help keep Kuwait clean and to help monitor their own environment. Mm -hmm. Very clear. Uh, let me talk about more yeah. about foreign policy and, and uh, uh, the latest updates here in this region. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Kuwait uh, and in the GCC, we, we feel a bit, a bit worried about the improvement if there is an improvement between the relationship mm -hmm. between the United States and, and Iran. And uh, that was very clear from our statements from our, our governments. And then uh, President Obama uh, asked for a, for a GCC mm -hmm. summit in, in Camp David. Uh, so I want to hear from you more uh, in details uh, about we being worried. Are, are we in the right mm -hmm. direction of, of analyzing the future of the relationship between the United States and Iran, and why do you think we were worried? And why would you think that the improvement of this kind of relationship would reflect in a negative way our relationship together? Yeah. Well, first of all, I, I don't really see what is happening in the international negotiations with mm -hmm. Iran as an improvement in relations between the United States and Iran. We are, along with our colleagues on the UN Security Council, Germany, and the European Union, mm -hmm trying to reach an agreement, which we hope we can reach by the end of June, mm -hmm. that will prevent Iran from developing a nuclear weapon. And one of the outcomes from uh, the summit at Camp David two weeks ago was that all of the leaders at the summit agreed that preventing Iran from becoming a nuclear weapons power was good for the region. Mm -hmm. What I think a lot of people in the region think is that if the United States and Britain and France and Germany and the EU and Russia and China reach this agreement, uh, we, our concerns about Iran will go away. Um, that really isn't true. The United States will continue to have very serious concerns about what Iran is doing in the region, its interference in the countries in the region. We have very serious concerns about Iran's uh, ballistic missile program. And we have serious concerns about Iran's very bad human rights record with regard to its own people. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that President Obama wanted to accomplish in the Camp David summit is to hear from Gulf leaders specifically what their concerns were with mm -hmm. regard to Iran and the entire region, but reassure them that the United States remains absolutely um, concerned about their security and we, no one should doubt our commitment mm. to the continued security of the Gulf. Mm. And then to work through strategies to make sure that Gulf states mm. feel themselves strong and confident mm. economically, politically, diplomatically. Why, why did our leaders ha had this feeling? Well, I, 
I don't know that your leaders have this feeling. There's a lot of commentary in the press. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, the history of the, of the Gulf region in the past 30 years mm -hmm. has been uh, one of Iran on one side of the issues and the countries of the Gulf on the other side of the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, President Obama, from the first day of his administration back in um, 2009, has wanted to bring Iran into a more productive relationship with the rest of the world, and particularly with our allies in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think many people somehow interpret this as meaning the United States wants to immediately uh, be friends with Iran. The answer is we want to change Iran's behavior. Mm -hmm. And the focus of the conversation on Iran in mm -hmm. Camp David was about concrete ways that the United States could cooperate with its Gulf allies to Mm. Uh, to help change Iran's behavior to positive behavior, not negative behavior. Do, do you think that we can do that together, to change uh, Iran's behavior? I and think and I, we, we both know very well the, the Iranian history. Well, I, I think we have to try, because what is the alternative? Um, mm. If the alternative is the current situation where there is tension mm. and there is interference, this mm. is not good for the region in general. It's not good for Iran, but mm. it certainly isn't good for the countries of the Gulf. Uh, we think that we should try to change Iranian behavior through diplomacy and through politics. Mm. We do not think that there is a military solution. Um, mm. So we are, what we were trying to do, what President Obama wanted to do at Camp David, mm. was to work with the leaders of the Gulf mm. to find concrete ways uh, to help them and to help us change Iran's bad behavior. Well, Mr. Ambassador, if you think that there is no military solutions on the table between all uh, the mm. GCC, the United States, and the Iran, uh, and Iran. W why would you think that uh, in, in, in the Camp David summit uh, we negotiate together uh, improving the military uh, uh, armies of the of the uh, of the GCC countries, supporting them with new air strikers, with new uh, new weapons? Mm. If if yeah. the military uh, uh, option is not on the table. Because we want the countries of the Gulf to work with us from a position of strength. We want the countries of the Gulf to be confident. Mm -hmm. We want the countries of the Gulf to feel that they have the ability to defend themselves. And this was one of the points that President Obama made most strongly to mm -hmm. His Highness the Emir and to the other leaders who were there. Mm -hmm. If there are things that the United States can do to make the Gulf feel more capable, feel more confident of its capabilities, mm -hmm. we will be happy to assist. So it is not because we see this as a continuation of a military struggle, quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. We think that it is to the advantage of our allies in the Gulf to deal with Iran from a position of strength. I mean, economic strength, political strength, mm -hmm. military strength. Is, is that a new uh, policy in the American administration, like we help you to help yourself uh, rather than before when you go directly and solve the problem? Well, it really isn't a new policy, and particularly with the Gulf, we have been working with our Gulf partners for many, many years, both individually and collectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the things that were discussed at Camp David in terms of strengthening um, the security relationship between Gulf countries and the United States mm -hmm. um, have been ongoing at a lower level for quite a long time. An example of that is a defense against ballistic missiles and an early warning system. This has been discussed uh, among the GCC and with our other allies interested in the region for many years. Mm -hmm. But perhaps now that this has been discussed mm -hmm. at the level of a summit in, in Camp David, it will develop a little bit more, uh, more concretely than it has in the past. Mm -hmm. Very clear. If you excuse me, Mr. Ambassador, to have a quick break. Please. الكرام فاصل قصير ونستكمل ما تبقى من الحديث. أود لكم مشاهدينا الكرام بعد هذا الفاصل القصير ومع سفير الولايات المتحدة في الكويت السيد دوغلاس سليمان. مستر أمباسادر أجين، the GCC summit they decided to sit back again after after one year 
from the last summit till next year, what do you mm -hmm. think between those should happen? And we, well, I want to hear from you more about the outcomes of, of the first GC summit. I think that the outcomes of this summit are quite clear in both in the statement and in the statements that President Obama and the other leaders have made to the press mm -hmm. since then. Um, first of all, from our side in the United States, President Obama underscored to the leaders the ironclad commitment of the United States to the security of the countries in the region. Uh, and all the leaders agreed that they would deter threats to the uh, security of any of the countries uh, and consult in how to address them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that this was something that was understood, but now it's been very plainly stated. Mm -hmm. Some of the ways that, uh, well, a second accomplishment was talking about increasing security cooperation. We talked about it a little bit in the last segment, but we talked only about the military side of it. Uh, certainly there will be an increase in military exercises and probably more cooperation between the United States and GCC countries and the GCC in military areas. Mm -hmm. But the discussion was much broader than just military. It talked about various aspects of counterterrorism trying to prevent foreign fighters from crossing borders to join the fight in Syria or in Libya or in other parts of the world, uh, cooperation between customs and immigration officials to prevent people from crossing borders uh, to fight in a, in a war elsewhere. They talked about how best to control the financing, the money that goes to, to terrorists, to try to make it more difficult for terrorists to buy weapons or pay people or, or purchase the things they need to conduct terrorism. They also talked a lot about something that Kuwait is, I think, increasingly involved in, and that is uh, sort of countering the ideology of violent extremism. And I know that um, the Ministry of Information here has talked a lot about what is needed in Kuwait, as have other governments in their own countries, to combat the ideology of Daesh and Al-Qaeda and Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab and the, the the violent extremist groups that seem to be popping up in different parts of the world. So when we talk about increased security cooperation, it isn't just military, and it isn't even all security. Some of it is cooperation uh, on ideology, and some of it is just a recommitment of governments to talk to their citizens about uh, their responsibilities as citizens. Mm -hmm. We also concluded that it was very important that each of the GCC countries feel confident in defending itself. And as you said again in the last segment, some of this may involve uh, delivery of you know, defense systems to countries in the region, mm. but a lot of it is going to be increased cooperation among the countries of the GCC and between the United States and the GCC on things like ballistic missile defense and an early warning system but potentially, as you read even today in the papers, on some sort of uh, rapid response force uh, for counterterrorism or even for peacekeeping uh, at some point in the future. These are preliminary ideas, but these are things that can easily be uh, talked about and worked on over the course of the next year. Another important point that President Obama made to the, uh, the leaders was that, at least in the opinion of the United States, real peace and security comes as much out of good governance and respect for human rights as it does uh, strong military and security cooperation. So uh, again, he wanted to underscore the point that the United States continues to believe that a government that represents all of its people uh, is going to be a more effective and a more popular and a better government and have fewer problems than a government which represents only part of its population. Um, this came into play in the discussion, for example, of Iraq, where all of the members pledged to help the Iraqi government fight Daesh and to find ways to push Daesh out, out of Iraq, but at the same time to encourage the Iraqi government to put in place the reforms mm -hmm. needed to bring all parts of Iraqi society fully into the, govern the governance of mm. the country. So, uh, well, are, you, are you happy with the results uh, that the um, uh, uh, international alliances are getting out of, of Daesh, especially after we've heard 
a few days ago about Ramadi and the improvement on the ground that Daesh is taking uh, inside the Iraqi grounds? Well, we have said all along that the fight against Daesh in Iraq and in Syria is going to be long and it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And we saw in the past week the assault on Ramadi. Uh, you've seen today that, that the Iraqi counter-assault on Ramadi seems to have begun. Uh, we know that this will be a long and difficult fight, mm -hmm. but from our side, we believe it has to be an Iraqi fight. Mm -hmm. It has to be uh, the Iraqi military and the Iraqi government in control uh, that comes up with the strategy to defend its territory against extremism mm -hmm. like Daesh and push Daesh out of the country. The United States and other members of the coalition will continue to provide assistance. We have been talking mm -hmm. to Prime Minister al-Abadi and mm -hmm. others in the government about the counter-assault on Ramadi. Mm -hmm. We have continued our airstrikes, our coalition airstrikes against Daesh targets in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And we are continuing to help train and equip new units for the Iraqi army to increase the capability of the Iraqi military to mm -hmm. defend its territory against Daesh. Uh, but as, as I said, and as we have said all along, this is a difficult struggle. Uh, and we believe very strongly that we will eventually succeed and the Iraqi government mm -hmm. will develop a strategy that will push Daesh out of the country. Da Daesh in, in, in Syria and, and the m m mentioning uh, Syria again, uh, we've seen a change in the way um, uh, the American administration is handling the, the Syrian file. Uh, from mm -hmm. like six months ago or a year ago, the American uh, administration is, is uh, focusing more on uh, Bashar al-Assad uh, stepping down from uh, the mm -hmm. president of, of, of Syria. And today, uh, the American administration is fighting Daesh, the main enemies of Bashar, of Bashar mm -hmm. al-Assad. So mm -hmm. is, is the priorities are, are, are the same when it comes to the Syrian file, or, or y your priorities have been changed? Well, this was also a significant part of the discussion at Camp David among the leaders, mm -hmm. that uh, the priorities now for the entire group will be to strengthen a, moder a moderate Syrian opposition. The United mm. States is beginning to train uh, some moderate Syrian forces to go back into Syria. We want to make sure that extremist elements in Syria, uh, Daesh, Jabhat al-Nusra, Ahrar al-Sham, and other extremist groups uh, are excluded from the process and are pushed to the side. But the real goal of all of the leaders of the Gulf, based on the discussion in Camp David, is for a negotiated political transition and one that does not involve Bashar al-Assad. Again, we don't believe that the problems of Syria, the instability in Syria, can be solved with a military solution. We will have to have a transition to a new government which better represents the Syrian people and is better at governing the country than the Assad regime, which is largely responsible for the situation we see mm. now in Syria, or Daesh or Jabhat al-Nusra, mm. who have uh, an, an entirely different set of problems but are not governing Syria well, um, are preventing women and girls from going to school, and mm. are, are, have put in a much more radical vision of Syria than most Syrians would agree with. So at the summit, we all agreed on negotiated political transition which would also uh, mean that Bashar al-Assad would have to depart government. Uh, have you discussed at the summit uh, the uh, war against uh, al-Houthis in, in, in Yemen? We discussed at the summit uh, the approach to Yemen in general. And mm -hmm. a lot of the discussion about Yemen really focused on the need for provision of humanitarian assistance. The, mm -hmm. the conditions in Yemen, I have talked to uh, the ICRC and other representatives from international aid organizations about the very dire condition in which many Yemenis now live as a result of uh, the Houthis military moves and uh, the inability of assistance to move easily around the country. Um, and at the summit, people agreed that it was absolutely crucial to provide humanitarian assistance and that it get to the places where it is needed. Uh, on the political side, we discussed about the need to restart the United Nations pro process to form a new government. And mm -hmm. there are ongoing discussions now among 
UN players, the GCC, mm. um, and but the, 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 the UN failed uh, uh, yesterday about uh, having a conference uh, in the United Nations between all all Yemeni. Uh, the, the UN. It, it was not able to get a meeting in Geneva as it mm. wanted on the dates that it wanted, but it doesn't change the basic policy to mm. which uh, the leaders at the summit agreed, is that the only real way to create a stable mm. uh, and peaceful Yemen so, is to negotiate a new So government. you think we should stop uh, taking airstrikes against the Houthis in, in Yemen as a GCC countries and start focusing more on political negotiations? That, that isn't actually what I said. What I said was uh, we have been actually supporting the mm. GCC countries in the airstrikes in Yemen because we understood the threat that Saudi Arabia and mm. the GCC states mm. felt from Yemen. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been providing logistical support and advice to GCC militaries. Mm -hmm. That is separate from the ultimate political solution. Um, and we think still uh, the United Nations process is the best way to get back to a mm. stable and peaceful Yemen. And it's going to have to be done again through political negotiations. Great, Mr. Ambassador, I would love to really thank you for accepting yeah. our uh, invitation here and for your transparency in answering all of our questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdul Wahab, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. انتهت مشاهدينا الكرام اذا حلقة اليوم من برنامج الشأن الهام نشوفكم ان شاء الله الاسبوع القادم تصبحون على خير.